Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest today, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Rocket Money. Are you one of those people who, like me, signs up for a bunch of subscriptions? There's like a ton of streaming platforms out there, and you need to subscribe to all of them, it seems, to just watch one particular show. And then you forget about it, and then you're being billed on it monthly, and you never cancel it, and you waste all this money. Yes, I do that too. That's where Rocket Money comes in. It's an app that will actually find all of your subscriptions, show it to you in one place. And the best part is, is that you can cancel those subscriptions through the Rocket Money app right there and then. You just pick the ones that you don't want anymore. and Rocket Money cancels it for you, which is, I mean, it's like a one-step process. Part of the reason I don't cancel a lot of my subscriptions is because I'm too fucking lazy to go through all the steps. I'd rather just waste the money. So that's why I love Rocket Money. Um, go to rocketmoney.com slash holly um, to take advantage of this amazing money saving app. You won't regret it. Okay, so let's introduce my guest. Uh, she first joined the industry 15 years ago. Since then, she's become one of the biggest alt porn stars with a list of nominations a mile long. I have had the pleasure of working with her a few times myself. Let's welcome Jessie Lee. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. I've always wanted to be on your podcast too. I was like, I follow it and I was like, I always, I always like watch your little like preview you have on Instagram. I was like, oh, I want to be on there. And then you emailed me and you emailed me. I was like, oh my God, she wants me to be on it. You manifested it. Manifested. Manifested. Oh my God. That's, that's so funny. Um, I'm always like, I'm always very honored to hear that. So thank you. Of thank course. you. Um, all right. Well, I guess let's, you know, I always like to hear everybody's origin story. So how did you get into porn? Where did this journey begin 15 years ago? Um, you know, like 15 plus years ago, there's all those like new alt porn sites that came about. Like there was like Suicide Girls and then Burning Angel was like the top one. And then there's like Broken Dolls and Ninja Girls and all these other, all these other like alt porn things. And Nerd Girl X, I think I was on to Deviant Nation. Um, but yeah, I just like started like modeling because I was because I had tattoos, not as many as I have now, but I, you know, I had a chest piece and I had a back piece and, you know, like I think I had some in my arms. I don't know. I had tattoos. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I just started like modeling for ones and then I like applied for Burning Angel and they set up a photo shoot and then I was like watching trailers and stuff like that from the site and I was like, well, I want to do that. So then, like actual porn. Yeah. So then, September of two thousand seven, I shot my first porno, and then I got booked for two more. And then Jonah was like, "Hey, I'm gonna fly out to LA in December or whatever. Yeah, December, and like shoot you for a bunch of stuff." I was like, "Okay," and then that's that. What was your first scene like? My first scene. <laughs> so my first scene was with um, it was a. I don't know if it was a boy girl or a bo a girl, a boy, boy girl. I don't know if it was like one guy or two guys, but I remember I was like doing the scene and Joanna's like, Jesse, you can be louder. I was like, okay. So then I was loud. Cause, you know, I'm so used to like, you know, being like a normal person and having like sex quiet so we can hear you. So, you know. <laughs> Do you live in an apartment with like. Always. Thin walls. <laughs> yeah. Lo lots of people in my apartment. Very thin walls. Um, So I, Joanna's like. Jesse, you 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 be louder. I was like, okay. Oh, and also I was on my. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this. My You're period. Uh, I was on my I was on my period when I first shot porn, and I was like, I don't know what to do. And Jonah was like, Oh, you put a sponge up in you. I was like, Oh, okay. So that's you know that's what people do in porn. You put you know get a makeup sponge, wet it, and put up in you. And then like I, <laughs> I couldn't get it out of me. So I I was like, Oh my god, it's way in me. And Joanna had to actually get the sponge out of me. Yeah, that's, that's that's how we bonded. She she took out my makeup so much out of my. I was <laughs> I was gonna say this is this is not a very uncommon story. I've also had to take makeup sponges out of girls' vaginas <laughs> as well, and um, yeah, people are always like shocked by that because they're like, oh my god, what if it goes up in you and you can't get it out? Um, have you ever heard about girls having to go and like get it taken out at the ER? Oh, that sounds awful. Yeah, I mean, how do you get it out? now like if you don't have help i mean i have long nails so that helps and i'll just like i'll just like squat a lot and like shove my hand up in me try to like literally fist myself 
I get it out. <laughs> I get it out. Sometimes it's it's a little harder, but I do get it out. You know, I um I remember the first time I tried that, I actually asked my good friend Danny Daniels about it because obviously she uh, had experience yeah. doing it being a porn star. And I couldn't get it out like the first time. And and I was like, okay, I know that like clearly I've seen this happen and I've helped other people, <laughs> but like I don't have anyone. So how do I do this? And she's like, just douche. And she was like, you know, and that might loosen up a little bit. She's like, but look, in the end, mm. if you're on your period, like the blood will make it heavier and will slip down more. And you'll be able to just wait. Don't panic. Well, just like, wait and get it later. There, and I was it like, kind of like, it kind of feels like the rest of you inside there. You know, it's like it feels it's true. It does. Like the sponge feels like the way the inside of a pussy feels. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just had to wait a little bit and then I was able to get it out. So. But that, yeah, people will be surprised to hear this, that uh, performers will work on their period and they will use um, like a wedge sponge and shove it up there. And that's that's how they do it. I'm not recommending this as medical <laughs> advice for anybody out there, by the way. But I'm just saying that girls have done this in the past in order to still perform. So that's a I mean, that's like on top of everything else of doing your first porn scene, which is always, you know, I feel like a somewhat yeah. like nerve wracking experience for people. That's an additional hurdle. Yeah. Cause I went from like, it was like a, Oh, it was a boy, boy, girl. It was for a, a film. I forget who actually bought it, but it's called Joanna angel gets totally fucked out of a shower. That was the name of the movie. Um, and then the next scene was like a, a boy, boy, girl, girl. And then the third scene that I get booked for, like all in the same weekend, it was a, uh, it was, it was a scene for Burning Angel, Burning Angel called "Fuck Thy Neighbor," with someone that I don't like to talk about, some awful performer. Okay. That used to be in Joanna's life. Okay. That's awful. So. Okay. I yeah. think I know who you're talking. It was about. a good scene, but he's horrible. So yeah. We're not going to mention his name. So you and Joanna are very good friends. Yeah, I love Joanna. I mean, you I guys actually have been... just saw her. I was at her her house this week, or her apartment this the entire weekend. In in New York, right? In Brooklyn, yeah. I flew in on Friday, and I had to dance Saturday night, so I just like hung out with her all day on Friday, and then Saturday I um, I danced at Sapphire, and then I like slept at her and Aaron's place. How um is she loving being back in New York? She's like, I feel like her taking herself out of New York was probably the worst thing for her because she's not really an LA person. She's yeah. so she she loves. Wow. I just heard something. I know. Just, I like, just did too. We just break check. Screeching tires outside. There was almost an accident right in front of the building, but that's okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, um, she's just so much of a New York person. She loves it. She loves the feel. I mean, New York's, I'm so much more of like, I want to live in suburbia now because mm -hmm. I dealt with like city living for so long. And I'm like, I want to be where it's quiet and I have space and. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I can. I was always like a city girl. I actually mm. grew up. I spent most of my childhood in the city, like in the Mar Vista, Culver City mm. area. Um, and then we moved out to Calabasas when I was in high school. And then I went to college, blah, blah, blah. And then when I moved back to L.A., I moved back into actually the house I grew up in, ironically, in like the Culver City area. Mm. And I lived there for 20 years. And yeah. I always like, you know, loved the city and loved everything being close. But I recently moved back out to Calabasas and yeah. And it's like a breath of fresh air. The parking, first of all, the parking. Um, I can go to Target now and there's so much parking and Target's so big. And the Target it's is so actually nice. nice. Yes. Such a nice Target. <laughs> like I live in, I live in North Hollywood and I live in, I live in uh, Henderson in Vegas also. I'm moving there permanently. I'm leaving Vegas. I'm leaving LA. I'm totally leaving. So I'm just like, really? it's gotten bad out here, man. Especially yeah. like I live in like North Hollywood and like North Hollywood when I first used when I first moved out here in 2011 like it was like super nice there's like Pandera there there's a coffee bean there there's like all these like really nice things and everything was super walkable and the streets are clean and now it's like Skid Row it's wow. crazy wow. yeah like I like I like I'll walk around at nighttime like walk my dogs at nighttime and I'll like. I'll get like weird like vibes and like yeah. I used to live in Bed Stuy in Brooklyn, you know, like, you know, yeah. I I was just, you know, I'm all about like being in like New York and like Brooklyn area, where it's like not like super safe, but it's like I I feel safer out there than I do in like North Hollywood because North Hollywood's it's like crazy people everywhere. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely the homelessness has gotten pretty bad. The 
bridge right by where I used to live. Um, it was the bridge right at like the intersection of the 405 and the 10. Mm-hmm. And they've called that the West Side Skid Row. And it's just grown and yeah. it's gotten huge. And actually, when we moved out of our house and we had it up for sale um, and it was empty, uh, somebody uh, broke in and was living no. in there. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. The city's not really doing anything about it. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to move to Henderson. Like, so no homeless. <laughs> how do you feel? Like, do you like Vegas? Because I don't know. To, I've to be fair, I've only been to Vegas like for the Avian show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know very little about Vegas. I know like the Strip, but to me, I don't know. It just seems like somewhere like I wouldn't like living. But you like it there. So the only time I used to be in Vegas was for like the Avians and stuff like that. So I stayed at a hotel, and it was always like you know Avians was like super hectic, super super hectic. That entire week, it's like the entire weekend, it's like super hectic. But then I would like me and my ex boyfriend, we would just like go to Vegas to like see stuff and like stay at a hotel and like actually explore the city. I was like, huh, it's actually kind of nice. And now that I like have an apartment in Henderson, um, I live with Sheena Ryder um, up there, up out there. But yeah, like her and I have a place in Henderson. It's like really it's quiet and everything's like 10 minutes away. Do they have a Panera? They have a Whole Foods. <laughs> I've never met, I haven't, I can't actually eat a Panera anymore because I'm vegan. So I don't know what they have for vegan food there. Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah. <laughs> but they have a Whole Foods. Oh yeah, they have a Whole Foods in like okay. the Green Valley area. Yeah. It's like really nice and like, I don't know, it's like 20 minutes from the strip. So yeah. How's the weather? I mean, it gets hot, but it's like you get used to it. Yeah. So it's not anything. I mean, yeah. it's better than like New York right now. Like it was like 30 degrees in New York and like my skin was like super, my skin's still dry from like I put on lotion. It's like still dry up from like being New York. I'd rather deal with like the heat than deal with the cold. Yeah. So. Yeah. I guess you do get acclimatized easily. Yeah. And I'm from Buffalo, New York originally. So I was like, I'm from like right now it's like four feet of snow it's like a blizzard there i was gonna say like you've you've lived in all of the places so you've karen, experienced all karen's of karen's doing her thing karen's being a karen <laughs> <laughs> um so you left the porn industry for four years yeah. uh what made you make that decision and what did you do during those four years so I was, this is back when like uh, tattooed girls were like super, super, super taboo. Like nobody wanted to hire me as a tattooed girl. Like unless I did like crazy shit like with the like Bonnie Ryan and Belladonna did. Unless I was like in Joanna. Like unless I was like in that category as in like doing all these like as a, an agent told me quote unquote circus acts. Unless mm-hmm. I did like circus acts like on screen. Like I mean I would, I wasn't getting booked and like you know me like I'm like. I'm a more central performer. Like, mm-hmm. I love being central. Yeah, I can get, like, dirty and nasty and stuff, but I, like, I prefer, like, sensuality because that's yeah. just how I am. But, like, nobody wanted to book me, and the only people booking me was, like, Joanna, and, like, there's only so much stuff she can put on the site of me before mm-hmm. everyone's like, oh, we're going to get to put other girls on there, too. Yeah. So I, like, left. I, like, I was, like, oh, I got in a car accident. That's what happened. I was in a car. I was, like, why did I do it? I was in a car accident. So I... I don't know. What did I do? I don't know. I wasn't. I feel like I've left the industry like a few times. So one time was for a car accident that I was in, and I was back in the industry a year later. And bef- and after that, I was out for four years because I was like over the industry and I like wanted to do something new. So I went to hair school. Mm-hmm. I'm a hairstylist. Um, I-, I love doing hair, but you know, I love porn too. Yeah. And then this last time, I like I didn't leave the industry, but I like stopped doing boy girl for a year and a half. And why is that? Well, I was in a relationship and like it's not that I like he was like saying like don't do boy girl, but it was like, you know, I like I didn't want to have sex with any other guys. Females absolutely give me all the pussy. All yeah. the pussy in my face. But yeah, I mean I cheered females in them too. I'd have this like film stuff for my OnlyFans. But yeah, like you know, and then I just like miss doing boy girl and having sex with like men mm-hmm. that were performers, you know, cuz it's like it's different having sex with your boyfriend than having sex with a performer. Yeah. But I like fell out of love and then I was like, "No." Oh, I'll sex with other men too. So mm. yeah. So now you're back. I am back. Have you done how many boy girls scenes have you done since you've been back? Um since I got back, I did uh one for it actually just got released for Naughty America. Mm-hmm. Um Shelby Black. Because I told Shelby, I was like, Hey, you're like my favorite my favorite director, so you should like film me for Naughty America. I was like, All right, when are you free? I was like, Perfect. So yeah. Who did you work with? Uh Lucas Frost. Oh, yeah. he's lovely. Yeah. He's a great performer. And it, I was like, oh, man, I missed this. So, yeah. <laughs> so now you're back. I am back. 
Um, so we're going to take a quick commercial break. But then I want to talk about your car accident. Yes. Because it was a major fucking car accident. And oh, I yeah. remember, like, seeing how much um, – I just remember seeing, like, Joanna posting about it a lot. And, oh, like, yeah. Really – I mean, you almost died, right? I did die for five minutes. I get – that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. They had to shock me three times. But yeah, oh my we'll God. talk about that after. <laughs> we'll talk about that after the police <laughs> sirens go by. <laughs> That's like our special like cue. It's like if I was one of those really cheesy podcasts that has like the sound drops. Oh. Uh, you know what I mean? Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, exactly. I just pressed the police siren because we talked about your car accident. All right, guys, hang tight. We'll be right back. The holidays are just around the corner. I feel like we could all use a little bit of extra money to spend on our loved ones or on ourselves. Look, there's a really easy way to save money. Did you know that you could be spending hundreds of dollars on useless subscriptions? If you're like me, and there's so many different streaming services out there now, if you wanna watch a show, you've gotta to subscribe to Paramount, or Hulu Plus, or Apple TV. You watch that show once, and then you never use that streaming service again, and you completely forget that you actually subscribe to it. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is an app that will actually show you all of your subscriptions in one place and you can easily cancel whatever it is you're not using. And the best part is, is that Rocket Money will cancel it for you. You just tick off what you don't want anymore. This can save you hundreds of dollars a year. So go to rocketmoney.com slash holly and find out how much money you've been wasting on useless subscriptions. That's rocketmoney.com slash holly. Hey guys, we're back. So. Jesse, you had a major car accident. You were dead for five minutes. I was. Tell us about that. So I was, this was 2010. This was November 5th, 2010, which is crazy because it's like, you know, like, remember, remember the 5th of November. Mm -hmm. So that has like a special meaning for me, that phrase. Wow. I know it's, it's about, you know, UK and whatnot. But yeah, like, remember, remember the 5th of November is like my thing. Yeah, it's Guy Fawkes Day. Yeah. But uh, so I was I was on my way to Exotica in New Jersey with Joanna and Joanna had just broken up with her, her big ex, like the mm -hmm. abusive ex mm -hmm. that everyone, if yeah. you know Joanna and you know and she, you know yes. who it is. So she had just broken up with the with the ex and like she was like getting a new apartment and like she was like move, she was like leaving him completely like she was like leaving the abusive relationship. So she was talking about it and she was driving and in Jersey you can't take left turns. But, I mean, I remember us going down the, the highway and, like, whatever. I forgot what it's called. It's not – what is it? The the thing in New Jersey? The highway in New Jersey? Whatever it's called. I, I don't, don't know. I don't know there's if I've a, ever There's been a certain type of highway in New Jersey. Anyway, so we, like, missed the exit. I'm going to go off. The Why next... are you laughing? What is it? it? Is it New Jersey Turnpike? I guess. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something. The road. So we're going on the highway. <laughs> and so she missed the exit and she had to get off at a different exit. And I guess like I just remember like the last thing I remember is like getting off the, the ticket booth, like the ticket booth to get off the highway. Mm -hmm. And I guess I don't remember this, but she's like, yeah, you were hungry. So I went to go like stop to go. I went to go turn in somewhere to like get some food. And she's making a left turn and like um, she caught some woman off that like wasn't paying attention. She was like on her phone or whatever. Um, the woman, like, I was, um, I wasn't really paying attention or wearing my seatbelt because nobody really wore seatbelts in back seats in New York. Um, but yeah, like, I'm, I guess, like, her car, she took a left and the car was coming and she, the car hit my door and it flung across the car. I hit my, sorry, hit the mic. So I, I hit the, I hit the car door on the other side and I, I fractured my neck and then I landed on the center console. My brain was bloody and bruised and I fractured my neck and I was dead. I had died. Um, so they had to uh, revive me on the scene. Um, so I was dead for five minutes. They like, I guess they like shocked me three times. They shocked me three times. After the third time I finally came back to life. Um, I didn't, I, I suffered severe brain damage, like severe brain damage. I was like, going to say, like, yeah. being dead for five minutes. That yeah, I, of... I suffered severe brain damage. Like, I, like, I lost memories. Like, I, like, couldn't remember a lot of stuff. I had uh, problems with, like, word association. Like, I still have it, too. Like, I'm like, what is that word? It sounds like this. So, like, I still have issues with that. My equilibrium is off, too. So, if I tilt my head like that, I'm fine to the right. If I start tilting to the left, you'll see, like, my eyes go cross-eyed. I, like, go cross-eyed. 
So I can't lay, <laughs> like, watching TV or a movie, I can't lay on this side. I have to lay on this side. Oh, wow. Also, like, see, I also go cross-eyed. Or if I, I'll have to, like, you know, like, you know, like, when you're, like, when you're drunk, you have to, like, put, like, one hand over the one eye so you yeah. can see. Yeah, that's yeah, how it is. I've, like, <laughs> Dude, I've driven like that. I've driven that drunk where I drove. You're, you're like, you're like, what is that? Like, oh, yeah, like, yes. it's crazy. I, exactly I am, I was put in a, I was in a mini coma for four days. Um, they had to, uh, they had to uh, wait four days to give me CAT scan because I had to be, I had to be uh, like conscious for like my CAT scan to do it. So they had to wait four days for me to come out of the coma or whatever. Um, but I guess also I used to have little dermals, like one in my cheek and um, like two in my chest. And I guess like my mom told me that because my mom, like my mom was on vacation with my little sister, like on like a wine, wine trip or something. They like left their vacation to be by my side and like they like spend all this money in hotels and all that stuff and whatnot so i'm yeah, really grateful course. to have them for i'm grateful that they like did all that for me yeah um <clears throat> but i guess like when they took the dermals out of me because it's like taking something on my skin i guess i like i woke up i was like what the fuck and i passed back out <laughs> <laughs> like of course um but i guess also like i my mom like wrote this thing like um updating people to send well he gave it to my friend jeremy who was like also raising money to help for like my bills or whatnot hospital bills um so my mom wrote that like i couldn't remember who she was or my sister was i thought like my little sister was like the doctor and like or was the nurse or something and my mom was like the wife or something i like didn't know anything like i didn't know who my family was it's crazy wow. yeah so i like had issues like just and like when I was in Buffalo, I had like, you know, I had I was doing cognitive, um, occupational and um, it was occupational, physical and um, cognitive therapy. I was doing all three of those like three times a week. But then I like I was in Buffalo and it was snowing because this was in like November, December. And I was like, I was so miserable because like the snow and the cold weather like makes me so like makes me sad and depressed. And I was mm -hmm. already depressed and I'd wake up literally every day and I was like. I want to end my life. Wow. That's rough. So how did you, how did you get through that? Um, I had to like get the fuck out of Buffalo. Like it was hard. Like I was just like, I wanted, cause it was like, it was lonely too. It was like, I was in Buffalo and like, I grew up, sorry. It was okay. Like I grew up there, but I wouldn't, but I didn't really have like that many friends out there. And the ones that I did have, like I, you know, like snow and, work and stuff like that so I wasn't able to see anyone so it was like my mom worked full-time so I was like by myself like not yeah. being able to do anything and like cooking was fucking awful like I was like so I love cooking but like I remember like trying to like cook eggs or something like that before I was vegan I was vegetarian so I was like trying to cook eggs and like I was putting oil in a pan and like seeing the little popping it was like fucking terrified me like I was scared to cook and I was like I couldn't do anything on my own and I couldn't like walk on my own because I had like right side weakness from like the crash. So I had to like have someone to help me walk. And I was like, this is awful. So I just wanted to fucking kill myself every fucking day. I was like, this is awful. And then I was like, I need to get to L.A. Because like my whole thing was like I was going to like move to L.A. I, was, I already like sent all my, my belongings to my friend in Hollywood, in West Hollywood. And like I was like, so all of my stuff was there. I had nothing. I had I had nothing with me except a suitcase, you know, I had no clothing, no nothing, especially for a winter. Um, I was going to leave. I was going to move there like right after Exotica. I was going to move there like in like late November, like for Thanksgiving. I was going to be there for Thanksgiving. And like, so I had literally nothing. So I had like, I was like, I need to get to L.A. I need to get to L.A. But the thing that sucks about L.A. is because um, my like all the um, all the like physical therapy and whatnot all the therapy i had was like covered through no, no jersey no fault because it wasn't my fault so all my like so like all of my like my therapy and stuff was that was covered in new jersey but like the right. moment i moved to california i didn't get that so yeah. i literally had to get better on my own once i came out here it's fucking the hardest thing ever and like yeah wow. it's hard so i like but being in california like the sunshine and warm weather. I was like, yeah. that like helped me a bunch. And I had like, a, I have a support system out here. So yeah. Yeah. So that helped. But, yeah. I mean, did you, I mean, especially when you were first trying to recover on your own, um, on the East coast, did you, did you not have a clear prognosis of how you were going to be? 
Like, did you not know if you're going to fully recover? No, like my um, the uh, neurologist, like he told me that like, because I was like, yeah, I'm going to try to move. Like January 10th is the day I was supposed to like, I bought the ticket or thing. Like our, my mom bought me the ticket to go out there. Ticket was bought somehow from when I got to LA. And um, like my my neurologist was like, there's no way you're going to be, there's no way you're going to be able to do this. I was like, fucking watch me. So I like, you know, I like made sure myself was better. My dad like bought me like a little Game Boy to like help my cognitive one hour. So like he bought me little games and stuff like that. I don't know where it went. It's got lost somehow in one of the moves that I've had. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, yeah, like I, I remember like in December, I went back a month later and he's like, he's like, you've made incredible progress. I was like, wow, thank you. Yeah, I'm fucking determined. I'm yeah. super determined. If I like want something, I do it. So. And that's so important yeah. for recovery. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> my dad is 81 and has Parkinson's and he's, his health has been declining. I mean, we had to cancel the podcast yeah. last yeah. week because he, um, fell and split his head open. I mean, I sent you a photo. Yeah. So when you saw, I was like, oh my God. I was like, you're like, I'm so sorry. I was like, no, don't be sorry. It's yeah. okay. Like, it, handle your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was intense. And, you know, he's just not been the same since he's gotten back from the hospital. Before that, that was his second trip to the hospital, actually, third trip to the hospital this year. But Shit. he had been in the hospital for like three weeks before that with pneumonia and sepsis. And, yeah, he's got like same thing occupational therapist, uh, physical therapist, like, three times a week mm. um he is pretty much wheelchair bound he can walk with a walker but someone needs to be there in case he like gets dizzy mm. but you know my concern with him is that well first of all he's older you know so obviously recovery is not yeah the same but he doesn't have that that determination that you have you know like he he's kind of i think given up a little bit oh that sucks you know and i know that that has so much to do with your recovery and that's what's oh yeah like absolutely and also hard. like i was you know like they talk about the 27 club mm -hmm. i was 27 when that wow. happened i just turned 27 like a couple months before then wow. or like a month and a half before then so i was part of the 27 club on wow. the 5th of november that's crazy for yeah. those of you who don't know what the 27 club is it's a bunch of like um Rock stars, and yeah, rock stars who have died at the age of twenty-six: Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, yeah, Jim Morrison. I think so. Yeah, Jim Morrison. Was it was Kurt Cobain also twenty-seven club? Maybe I think so. Was Monroe Marilyn Monroe? I know Betty Page did died way down the line, but I think yeah, any any like young celebrity that dies, mm -hmm. most of them die like at the age of twenty-seven. It's usually by like overdose or something like that. Yeah, overdose or like. I, a tragic accident i mean overdose is a tragic accident yeah, accident yeah. but yeah but yeah it's like it's crazy because i'm like oh it's part of the 27 club for like five minutes it's crazy do you remember waking up from your coma i don't remember anything i mean i just remember like my friend i had a lot of friends there like visiting i have a, I have a huge support system like when i had a huge support system with that so like i had like friends visiting me all the time yeah so how did that change your outlook on life that whole incident um so before that i was like i was very much a new yorker <laughs> i was living in brooklyn but i was like i was very much a new yorker and like very much like oh fuck everything like very like you know taking not really like i don't know not really like being optimistic at all and since then i've like been like very like i don't take anything for granted yeah. at all like it's like i'm like super like grateful for everything so yeah, yeah. even now 12 years later yeah like i'm like I mean, I know, like, I think I think I have, like, more of a a free thinking than anything. You know, even if we try to focus on gratitude and even if we do find ourselves grateful, most of the time, it's obviously we're never like that 24-7. Yeah. But to even be able to access that, like, yeah. more frequently, I think, is more than most people do. Oh, yeah. Like, people need to just, like, know that, like, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Do you think about that sometimes when you're like faced with some kind of stupid issue, like some, I don't know, day to day life nonsense and you're just like, it's not the end of the world. I almost died. Yeah. I mean, it's it's always like when I get obviously I'll get frustrated of everything. Like, you know, sometimes when people are taking too long to do stuff, I'll like, I'll like you know. Yeah. But I'll be like, you know, they need this time. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's fine. Whatever. Like. So it messes up my order. As long as I can eat it, I'm like, whatever, it's fine, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, 
I mean, yeah, everyone everyone gets in their little slumps, but like I just try to be more grateful for everything, be have me be more patient. Like I think that's my goal as I get older to be more patient and not let the little things bother me. That's a hard thing. Yeah, it's so hard. Really Cuz I'm like such a I'm such a, a firecracker. Like I'm like I will talk shit to anyone and like, you know. Yeah. I'm very like I I try to keep the New Yorker in me alive, but you know, I'm trying to like <laughs> dull down the New Yorker. <laughs> it's like a healthy balance. Yeah. You want that side of you that pushes through tragedy and trauma like your accident, but then also yeah. like have some compassion and patience. It's exactly. hard. It's a hard line to walk. Yeah, it's especially in LA, it's hard in LA. <laughs> Why do you say that? It's hard at I don't know, because there's a lot of people that are just like, I don't know, there's I mean, I guess that's with any big city. There's a lot of, like, toxic people everywhere. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people who are just very, like, unaware unaware out here. Mm. How, Maybe like, that's just the younger generation. Don't get me started on the younger generation. <laughs> get off my lawn! <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the differences between, like, people in New York and L.A.? Um, I feel like in New York, people are just more aware. Mm -hmm. they're just more aware of everything mm -hmm. like i was i was walking i was walking through like i don't know like the Times square area or whatever and i was like i i can tell the people that are actually like crossing the street they're actually new yorkers and the one who are just like visiting because the people who are just like visiting they're just like looking around not really paying attention to like if the light's green or whatever like new yorkers are very like they'll fucking they'll look at cars and they'll, they'll, they'll wait until the car stops like all right i'll go you know mm -hmm. i feel like yeah, I feel like New Yorkers are more, like, aware of everything. And I feel like a lot of people in L.A. are so, like, distracted by everything. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. There's also, like, I think people people in California specifically, I think there's that more laid back attitude. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas New Yorkers are more focused. And yeah, so I mean, like, like, they're just, they're more focused. So they're, like, more aware of, like, all their surroundings. Like me, like, I'm super aware of my surroundings when I'm, like, walking around and stuff. Although sometimes I have tunnel vision. Yeah. On purpose. Though I feel like that it's probably specifically because you walk around so much in New York. Yeah. You don't really do that in LA. No. I mean, I try. I try, but it's hard. <laughs> Everything's so far. It is. It really is. It took me an hour to get here today. It was awful. Yeah. No, it takes it takes an hour pretty much to get anywhere in LA. It's kind of nuts. Yeah. Okay, I guess it's like everything's 10 minutes from me. I'm like, oh, this is nice. This this is actually this studio is like ten minutes from me, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, not me. I, know. I know that never happens. Um, you've been sober since two thousand eight. I have. Uh, so a few years before the accident, was it an even bigger challenge to stay sober while recovering from the accident? Um, it wasn't really like since I've been sober, it hasn't really been a big. I mean, that first like six months or a year was really hard because it was like I was getting used to stuff and I had to like. I got really bad social anxiety by like, you know, if you're not going to the bars and drinking, you're just like, I had to still make myself go to the bars because that's like where all my friends were. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that's I was very like very much a socialite. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, going to bars is fine. Just I had to like figure out what to do at bars. So I actually would start knitting. <laughs> I would like knit at the bar. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so wholesome and sweet. Yeah. I was like, but it gave me something to do instead of just like texting, looking at my phone. I was like, oh, I'll just start knitting, and everyone's like, oh, that's Jesse. She's just knitting at the bar, you oh know. Oh my god. But yeah, I think I also think my sobriety helped me with like my recovery. It's like mm -hmm. why I was able to recover so fast. You know, not so fast, but like why my neurologist was like, oh, there's no way, there's no way, you know. And then like a month later, he was like, wow, you've made amazing progress. It's because I'm sober. Yeah. Because I don't have any other like weird toxins in my body. Yeah. Right? Any tell drugs me, in my body. Tell me about getting sober. Why did you decide to get sober? And like, when you say sober, do you mean just alcohol? Do you mean everything? Because different people have different definitions of sober. Um. So I never really liked. I never really liked weed. It always mm -hmm. gave me like a weird like. I always had a bad reaction. People were like, oh, it's a strain of weed. You're. I was like, no. Every time I smoke weed, it's a bad reaction. Like mm -hmm. at THC, I'm not going to THC. I mean, I've, like, done CBD, but it has, like, no drug in it. You yeah, know? yeah, there's no um, yeah, psychoactive element. But, yeah, like, I remember I was just, like, you know, I was – I moved to New York, and I was freshly at Burning Angel. So I, like – I used to throw Burning Angel parties. I was, like, one of the – like, I was one of the – other than Joanna, I was, like, the top girl at Burning Angel. So I would always throw parties through New York and, like, you know, this and that. So I would – 
I would, became friends with a lot of DJs and promoters and bartenders and bar owners and stuff like that. So I'd be like, I'd show up to the bar and like, oh, here's a, here's the table. Here's the table with a free bottle of booze. So I'd drink lots of booze. So every, I think it was like five, six day, nights a week. I was just like drinking, you know, because like I would just be, you know, crazy as a, mm-hmm. you know, the crazy junk girl doing stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. I can't believe she did that, you know. Like, I would, like, and then anytime I, like, wanted to, like, do drugs, like, cocaine mm-hmm. was when I was drunk. Right. And I've done a lot of stuff for the cocaine because I was drunk and because I went, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to pay for the cocaine. I'll just do this. So I'm like, mm. I made a lot of bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, it wasn't, it wasn't until, like, I, like, woke up and I was, like, craving alcohol. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, my father... I grew up in NA. My father wasn't. My father was a head speaker in NA, and like you know, so it's like it runs in my family. You know, addiction. You know. So was he a circuit speaker? Yeah. Okay, so he traveled around. And... Well, not a circuit speaker. I don't know. I don't know what that. I don't. I don't know. So why circuits, I said yeah. I don't know what that is. Well, circuits. So when you say head speaker, was he maybe the secretary of meetings? So so he um so he was like the the NA like the group that we went to. He was like one of the main speakers. So he like ran all the meetings. Okay, so he was probably yeah. like the secretary or yeah of the of the whatever it was in Buffalo. But okay. Yeah, so okay. And so I'm like, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that at all. So I uh I was like, all right, I'm gonna stop drinking. And then it was like. I didn't do I didn't do meetings or anything like that because mm-hmm. I don't like I don't like organized religion I don't like anything it stands for I think it's very toxic I mm-hmm. mean um, I think once people find it they're just dependent on it and if they if if something doesn't go their way they're like oh I can do this because of this I was like no I'd rather just depend on myself for my sobriety mm-hmm. so I just started hanging out with uh sober people in New York and going out and like it was I was like oh you can be sober and go out and have fun so this girl Ariel um she like i would just go out with her and and then people just knew me as like the burning angel who didn't drink who like the party who who would just get her friends drunk instead Mm -hmm. so yeah and you haven't had any cravings or like times that you wish that you could no actually i get really like turned off by people i mean i think people who are like drunk i just think like people okay there's like fun drunks like when Joanna gets drunk, I can tell she's drunk because she'll start like dancing like a stripper at the bar. I was like, oh, Joanna's drunk. I yeah. love Joanna when she's drunk. Um, but like other people I don't know that don't know how to handle their alcohol, like they just like they're just sloppy to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people just get too sloppy and just like it's too much. I'm like, oh, it's really annoying. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to be that person. So I'm I if I drink, I become that person. Yeah. So yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody's different. There's <laughs> the most the most annoying thing that my husband does when he's not he's just not even drunk he's buzzed is when we watch a movie he pauses it constantly or tells me to pause it because he wants to like talk about the movie <laughs> as we're watching it and i get so irritated i'm like babe i just want to watch the movie i don't want to fucking dissect it like stop asking me to pause it's so annoying so like that's but that's like that's like the worst that i have to deal with that's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not, it's too, not bad. too bad. But it, is, but it is funny how like these certain characteristics come out in people, and you're just like, when you're sober, you're just like, like oh god, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that? <clears throat> I mean, would you have characterized yourself as an alcoholic, or do you just think oh, that like it was becoming a problem, and so um, then like you just decided to um, like not engage in the problem anymore? Yeah, I consider myself an alcoholic because I had to depend on it because I started depending on it and I started craving it. It wasn't until I craved it that I was like, oh, shit, you know? Mm-hmm. I guess I wasn't like a fucking like, you know, like I'm an addict, you know? Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm a very addictive personality. I'm very addictive. Like I like go in full force everything. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. It's so interesting because, you know, I'm sober too. Mm-hmm. And um, I definitely had to do like the 12-step program and I'm still in it. Mm-hmm. Um and I tried to not do it because I didn't want to. Uh-huh. That was like the last thing I wanted to do was like go hang out with a bunch of fucking people and like, you know, yeah. the God word and everything like really like, bump, you know, freaked yeah. me out at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so I tried everything, but there was just no way that I could do it without like some kind of community and some kind of like accountability. Like I just had to have that. Otherwise, it was not possible for me to get sober. But you know, it's like, it's different for everybody. Like mm-hmm. er, that's, the, and that's so interesting because I think about it too. Like I always try to pinpoint, okay, like what's the difference between an alcoholic and a problem drinker? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause like they're two different things. No, I never um, thought about that. Yeah. I mean, I think probably because 
I mean, it sounds like you, I mean, you made a decision to stop and then yeah. like you just well, Also, stopped. with me, like I couldn't just drink a little. It was either like not drinking yeah. or fucking get wasted out of her mind. Yeah, and like yeah, yeah. I would like go out like, you know, cause Buffalo's open, bars are open until 4 a.m. So I would just go out drinking in Buffalo and like I would just like start drinking. When I got too drunk, I would just like make myself throw up like to get sober in the bathroom and start drinking some more. Like that was. Which that to was... me feels like a super logical thing to do. Yeah, like, I mean. No joke. Like you want to keep <laughs> drinking, you know, you I mean, it's like it's like I'm drinking stuff that tastes delicious. So, you know, I just want to keep, you know, my Cosmos and my Armand Sours, my Captain <laughs> Diet. Love it. Apple teenies. I, I like drinking like at bar. I like drinking like uh, like like Apple teenies and stuff like that yeah. and Cosmos because it like make me look fancy in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have my fingerless gloves on and my, you know, my, my <laughs> they drink. are beautiful drinks. They really are very yeah. pretty. Yeah. They're, they're not good. No. It's funny because I used to wish that I was one of those people who threw up while they were drinking so that I could because I always felt that the people who did that or who threw up after a long night of drinking got it out of their system and woke up the next morning not as hungover. Mm. But I used to wake up the next morning so hungover. And if I was going to throw up, it was going to be the next morning and it was going to be like the rest of the day. So I used to literally like wish I was I was like, I wish I was one of those people that just threw up at the end of the night and like it's so funny because at the time I thought that maybe that would be like the answer to my problems mm-hmm. was that I would throw up after a long night of drinking rather than like oh I don't know maybe the answer to your problems is to not, not drink, drink that much or not yeah. drink but no no no, no. <laughs> well, yeah that's, that wasn't my first thought it's so funny like like the things that we think like when we're like when you have alcohol, alcohol in your system we're like oh yeah this is the reason like no that's that's not the reason yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's a solution. I I remember too, like getting really drunk and then making terrible decisions about like texting somebody or sending an email, having and sex then, with people you shouldn't be having sex with. Yeah, and, and then like actually thinking about and and recognizing, okay, I'm drunk. Let's really think about this. Like, is this a good idea? And trying to be logical in that mind, and then deciding like, yes, this is a good idea. And then like the next morning, being like, what? Fuck. what did I do like but trying to be logical when I was drunk mm. um just didn't work yeah I'm just got it I've been sober since 2008 yeah since March of 2008 it's crazy yeah I mean I really admire people like you who can who can just like do that who can just be like you know what this is a problem for me yeah. this is affecting my life in a negative way and I'm just gonna stop engaging in saying that's affecting my life in a negative way like I just couldn't like intellectually. I knew that I knew that I needed to stop, but it was just not possible. It I was just like, do it. Like I've, I've done mean, I've gone to meetings and stuff like that. Cause back in the day I got a DUI. So, you know, the court, like it's crazy. The court, like when you get a DUI, you have to go to two AA meetings, like a week mm-hmm. plus go through like uh, alcohol classes mm-hmm. or something like that. Drug alcohol classes, but it's like, it's anonymous. So you would just have to like, get something stamped but here's the thing like how are they going to prove that that's not the stamp so i like i was like you know i was still drinking or whatever it's like when i lived in maryland but yeah like i was like i like i like copy the stamp and i like i like bought a stamp from online like with that like marking so that's just what i did i just like stamped my stamp and i'm like this is stupid you're so right and it's so funny because i didn't think about it at the time either because i went to a couple of treatment centers Mm -hmm. and sober living and so i had to get stuff signed off but there i was a little bit more accountable because they knew the meetings Mm -hmm. in the area and i had to like check in and you know a lot of people that at my treatment center would be going to the same meeting so they could say if i wasn't there but i did it didn't occur to me at the time that, yeah, I could just, and we didn't stuff. even have stamps. Yeah. Someone like, would just like, sign it. Yeah. Cause like, like it's all call anonymous. How yeah. are you going to prove? How yeah. are you going to prove no, this? You could totally, I mean, I'm not trying to encourage anybody <laughs> that has, has a court ticket to not go to meetings cause it could be the right thing for you. It's not right for everybody, but it could, it could save your life. Um, but yeah, <laughs> definitely like could have just not done that. But I never yeah. got a DUI, so I never had a court card. I did. I was, oh God, I was like with my mom, and we we're in Frederick, Maryland, and we went to a we went to this like hotel that was like, like a few miles away, and I we were drinking Cosmos all night. My mom like met some guy, so she like left the guy. So I drove home, 
And I fucking, I was like looking for my cigarettes. I was like, where's my cigarettes? And like, I had them like between my legs. And I'm like, I looked down and I was like, oh, there's that. So instead of going 270, what, the one direction on two, instead of going north, I was going, I like, I like went into the median and flipped the car over and I was going the other way. Oh, yeah. My. I crashed my mom's car. Mm. Sorry, mom. That's Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, mom. I love you. <laughs> but yeah, like. <laughs> You know, she didn't like scold me for it. She just really like she was like she's like, Oh, what did you do? She was like, Oh so I had to go to so I was like, I'm sorry. And then I still drank after that and I was like, Oh man, I'm still like I'm an idiot. So yeah, yeah. I don't know how to I don't I had no idea how to say no at alcohol ever. So that I think that's how I know I'm an alcoholic. Cause, like mm-hmm. I didn't know how to say no and I was like, Oh, I'm just just drink I'll just keep drinking. I'll be fine and then I'll get fucking wrecked and it was like awful. So yeah. yeah. I know there's a lot of people in porn are actually sober, like the sober mm-hmm. porners or whatever they mm-hmm. call them in Vegas, like Goth Charlotte and yeah. their wife. Yeah, I know there's quite a there's quite a few people. I've had a, a few of them on my podcast, Seth Gamble, Kenzie Taylor. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that are like openly sober. Sober is sexy. Which is cool because I remember when I was first starting to get sober, um, and I was talking to my therapist. And I had to, AVN was coming up and I like had to go and I was like, I can't do this. Like nobody else is sober in the industry. She's like, you'd be surprised. There's sober people everywhere. They just don't necessarily advertise it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, 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 there's no way. Like this is porn. No one's sober. I'm the only one. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I ended up going and I remember Dustin Flint, um, Larry's nephew. Yeah. Nephew. Mm-hmm. Um, he was sober and he told me that there was like a secret like AA um, industry meeting Mm -hmm. that was like being held in one of the rooms. And I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, holy shit. And I remember I went and there were all of these people that like, I really respected, like people who like were the heads of big companies. Oh wow! And I was so like, I can say actually one of them because he was super open about it. Um, So I'm not outing him and he's passed away. Unfortunately, I'm Christian man or evil angel. Yeah, he was sober and he's always been very open and vocal about it and on social media and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not outing him, but I remember like seeing people like him and I was like, wow. And I was like, man, maybe I like can do this and like also still work in this industry. It's like interesting. So that gave me, that was really helpful just to feel like there was other people like me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's more like us. Yeah, I know we're, we're everywhere actually. It's kind of, it's kind of surprising. Um, okay, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your tattoos. Yeah, you have a lot of tattoos. What are some of your favorite tattoos, and are there any like meaning, like deep meanings behind any of them? Um, so I'm wearing pants, so you can't really tell, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I have my whole leg done. This part of my leg, it's Little Mermaid. Oh, really? Like the Disney Little Mermaid? <laughs> so I have Ursula and her two eels on this leg, and then I have like. I have the Eric statue. I have the Dingle Hopper. I have Sebastian, Flounder, Scuttle, Ariel. But my friend Dave did Ariel, and he's like, he's like, do you want to give her like bigger boobs and like a big butt? I was like, absolutely. So it's like, it's like Ariel with big boobs. It's like with a BBL. Yeah. Ariel with a BBL. And she's got a big butt, and, and she's sitting <laughs> inside a shell and stuff. Yeah. But on this, like, I have a lot of like sober tattoos. Like, I try to get like. Oh, so one thing that also helped me with, like, uh, being sober is I started, like, hanging out with a bunch of people who were straight edge. Like, straight edge is, like, no drugs, no alcohol. Like, it's, like, you know, like, mm-hmm. no weird things. And, like, I'm also vegan, so I'm, ve- I'm vegan edge. Uh, but, yeah, like, I, like, I started getting, like, straight edge tattoos. Like, I have, like, drug free and, like, the X's and stuff like that. My friend Bo did the, the straight edge, XXX. Um, so I have a bunch of, you know, my the neck, I have, like, the three X's. Like, a lot of my tattoo artist friends were also straight edge. So, like, I get it I, every year that I'm sober, most, except this past year, I'll get, like, a straight edge tattoo, like, from a, commemorate that I'm, like, you know, that I'm sober. So, I usually get it done by, I always get it, I have to get it done by a sober tattoo artist because you can't have someone who's not sober do yeah. something on body that means something. Yeah. So, yeah, so those are, those are ones that actually, like, mean something. And then I have another one up on my back. It's a little, like, tombstone my friend Desiree did, um, and it has, like, it has like my my death day. So it's RIP with like my death day that I had. The fifth of November. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Always remember. Yeah. So most of my tattoos don't really mean anything. They're just like pinups and like so like naked women, you know. I mean naked women mean something. So what what's with the little mermaid? I love the little mermaid. I have to say that movie holds up really well. So I've started rewatching um 
old Disney cartoons because mm-hmm. I have a daughter now. And I was the Little Mermaid holds up so well, and the music, like, oh my god, Under the Sea, it's such a fun song. It's like the it's... one ride that I go to. I go to Disney all the time, <laughs> but it's like the one ride I go to every time I'm in Disney. I was like, I have to go through it. I sing along through the entire ride, and <laughs> so. Um, yeah, when I was younger, I, like, watched the movie because I was, like, you know, it came in on 89, and I was, so I was six years old. I was born in 83. I was born in the 1900s. <laughs> we were born in the 1900s. So, yeah, so I was, like, I was, like, six when I came out, so I was, like, obsessed with, like, mermaids, and I started drawing mermaids. And, like, also every year at Disney, there's a thing called Mermaid Day where oh, a bunch really? of people, the one day dress up like mermaid. We all have meetups and stuff like that. We take group photos. Like, everyone dresses up like a mermaid. And I, like, meet, I, like, met a lot of my, like, new, a lot of my Disney friends. I've met them, like, through Mermaid Day. Wait, you have Disney friends? I have Disney friends. What does that mean? I have friends who I go to Disney with. It's like, Sheena Ryder, like, her and I, I mean, she didn't read through her past, so she can't go as much, but I have, like, a friend, Tony, who worked for Disney that can do sign-ins, so, yeah. So Sheena Reiner and I go to Disney. Me and Joanna have gone to Disney. Like, it's just a happy place, you know? How often do you go? Like, how many times a year do you go? In October, I went four times. <laughs> Wait, in October? Yeah. <laughs> I have, like, I have the the, the, the Inspire Pass, which is the, the, the most expensive one. It's, like, $1,600 for, like, the... $1,600 for the year, and you get free parking, which is $30. Saves me $30. I get, like, discounts and stuff like that. Um... But also on December fourth through the ninth, I'm going to Disney World. Wow, have you ever been there before? I went there two years ago for my ex's birthday. Okay, so it was like with him and his mom. So it was like it was okay, you know. I I was looking into Disneyland because again, like I said, I have a daughter, and so we were thinking about going. But I Lily was Lily Lane goes like, all the time with her daughter too. Who does Lily Lane? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, but I, I mean, she's two, so I'm a little bit worried about, like, mm. it being a lot for her and, like, her, she's not very good at listening sometimes, like, to oh. run away from me, so I'd have to put her on a leash, which it's I don't fine. really want to do, but I'm scared of losing her. Um, so we were looking into, like, ways to skip the line, and, like, there's a private tour thing. It's, like, $700 it's so an hour. Expensive. So the, the thing, because I had it, so a few years ago... My friend and his girlfriend, they brought me to Disney for my birthday as a birthday present. And they got a, they got a host or a guide or whatever they yeah. call it. They got a guide for us. And also, if you're a Club 33 member, which is also really hard to get on, into yeah, also. Yeah, that's like you get, like you get like It's not only expensive, you get, but you feel like recommended or something. It's like a $75,000 initiation fee. 75000 just to become a member. That's what it is now. It used to be like when my friend Randy became a member. Like It was like... Thirty-five thousand or whatever. Just still obscene. I think Dana G, our mom's a member. Really? Yeah, I think she's a member. Sorry, Dana. Sorry. Wow. I don't mean to like call you out, but <laughs> I mean, she was supposed that she was there anyway. So, That's yeah. That's crazy. So she, I don't know how much she paid, but yeah, yeah, I don't. I know they recently raised it. And it's like seventy-five thousand, and it's like a couple year wait. But you also get, you get free like you get you get like a bunch of free passes per day. You get like four. You get like four of the top of the line passes um annual passes you get like a bunch of like sign-ins you get like a ton of freaking like fast passes and stuff for like the day and then you get like you get like a bunch of guides throughout the year so but the guides are like i like try to get one for my ex's birthday i was like yeah it's like i heard it's like a hundred dollars an hour that's fine i'll just get one for like eight hours it's eight hundred dollars that's nothing you know you know it's like that's like Almost a scene, <laughs> you know. I think what we looked up it was it had it was a ten people, mm-hmm. like it was a four group of ten people. That was like the minimum, mm-hmm. um, and infants count towards that. By the way, That's crazy. And I think it was like thirty five hundred or something. And then you had to pay the admission fee on top of that, like that didn't include the admission fee. So it would end up being like five hundred dollars a person if you took like a group of ten or something like that. I mean, I would do that. Yeah. I would totally do that, you know. know. But yeah, I don't know if I'm. I don't know. But not for like, but not for like infants. That's crazy. That's a. That's also the thing too. I feel like at two, like I don't know how much. Well, don't like if you're like under a certain age, you're getting free to Disney anyway. I like that your podcast has turned into Disney. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) It's an insider Disney's Disney's podcast. (laughs) 
This is the part where everyone's checked out. This is not sponsored by Disney. <laughs> yeah, they're like, are, are they going to get back to talk about boobs or something? <laughs> You talk about my nipple tattoos that I have. Yeah, actually, it was funny because um, Lily, my producer, like she wrote a note in her notes to me. She was like, I'm really obsessed with her heart nipple tattoo. She's like, I know you probably see this stuff all the time, but I just think that's you can so kind amazing. Of, oh, wait, I won. Well, people of... can Google it because we can't show it on YouTube. You Otherwise, kind of see it a I, will little get, bit. I will get busted. A little bit. Just, just see that Google Jesse Lee <clears throat> boobs. And take your safe Well, they're new, off. though. They're new. They're pretty new. Oh, they are? So, yeah, they're pretty new. I mean, they're not, like, crazy new. If you go to my Naughty America scene, I think they're my browser scene also. It's weird, though. I, I filmed for Naughty America, like, a month ago and I filmed from Razors like months ago and they both got released within the within a week I was like okay cool so I have a new browser scene and a new Naughty America scene how about this can will you do me a favor after this podcast is over can I take a picture of them yeah absolutely. and then I'll post them on my Patreon because I can post boobs on my yeah. Patreon and then you guys can see that okay cool it's another reason to keep listening yeah exactly and support the show speaking of patreon um we're going to end this interview but we're going to do a little bonus q a for my patreon members so if you're a member not only will you be able to see her new uh heart nipple tattoos but you'll also be able to get to know so much more about jesse lee um sorry that i hijacked her interview with my disney talk that's that's okay <laughs> i feel i'm pretty sure I, I mean, I'm the one who continued to ask you about it. I could have diverted the conversation but to Disney, boobs, but I chose Disney's not to. Life. <laughs> life. Well, thank you so much, Jesse, for coming on. It's been thank such you. a pleasure. I had fun. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online, please? Um, you can find me. My Instagram is Jesse X Lee. It's J E S S I E X L E E. Um, and then my Twitter is O M G. It's Jesse Lee. Not OMG, it's Jesse Lee. OMG, it's Jesse Lee. ITS. ITS. And there's a lot of people who pretend to be me, but they're not me. Because yeah. if you don't. Yeah. Are either of your accounts verified? It's so hard to get verified, man. Yeah. And I need now to that... start doing other stuff that, that isn't just porn. I need to stop just doing porn stuff. <clears throat> it's, you know, I don't know, though. Like, <sighs> it's. It's a weird thing because some people get verified. I got, I only got verified because I have a friend who um, is a talent agent and she like knows people. So she got me verified. But that was like the only reason that I even got verified. I don't know how anybody else does it. It's so hard. You have to be a director and stuff like that too. So I think if I'm if director is because Joanna's, Joanna's um, oh, really? verified. She's been verified for a while, but she also owned a website and stuff like that. So I think if you have like, if you're not just like a, like an actress, you can get very, it's hard to get act as an actress, like with like, you know, under under a couple million followers. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get verified. But once you're like at that like couple million and you're like doing other stuff also, I think it's easier to get verified because I don't think they just want to verify like anyone who's a porn star. You know, they want to like make sure they like you're actually like, do other stuff also. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, is and whatever we go on this first forever, but they should because the problem is, is that there's so many people who create fake accounts who pretend to be porn stars mm -hmm. and then fucking scam people out of money. And you can't say like, you know, make sure that it's a verified account just to avoid being scammed if they won't verify account. Mm -hmm. To be fair, you can still have a verified account and people can still scam other people out of money. And those people will not only send $5,000 to some random person in Ghana who says they're being like held captive by their like boyfriend, <laughs> but they will also still come back and blame you for the fact that they got scammed by somebody else, but it's still like your fault somehow. It's like, yep. I'm like, sorry. And it's crazy too, because both Twitter and TikTok and Instagram will shadow ban the actual performers yeah. account and then allow the fake people to be searched this happened like a year or so it's ago crazy. like i was like i was just like looking at my memories and stuff like that on facebook and it said that i was like i like someone like tried to do account someone said that they were me and they weren't me and they had like twenty thousand followers which is crazy i'm like yeah i have like 200 like over two hundred thousand, you know like yeah. way over two two hundred thousand. so people were like so I was like, people told me what I was like, oh, okay. So I like reported them for spam for impersonating me. And then if they like, they shadow banned my account, they disabled my account. I was like, what is going on right now? Yeah, I've heard of that too. So yeah, but I finally got it back. I had a friend who worked for Instagram who 
who like got a bunch of pages back also who got he's the person who got exotica their page back okay but now he got fired for instagram for like getting people back that he didn't actually know personally so it's so stupid yeah god anyway anyways but if you want to follow me on instagram Perfect. i am shadow banned um so sometimes it's hard to find me by the way if you want to get around the shadow ban like little trick use google so search holly randall instagram on google that will take you to the right account rather than trying to search holly randall in instagram because google doesn't like abide by shadow bans it just goes wherever the most amount of traffic is so that's a good way to that's what i do when i try to find people because like obviously you know when i'm trying to tag people for the podcast um a lot of times fake accounts come up if i search in the app but if i go outside of the app and I search in Google and I put in the performer's person's name plus whatever um, platform I'm trying to find them on. That is almost always the correct one. I've done that for bands. So. Yeah. So just so do you that know. for forums. But it is Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Only Holly Randall. It's not, nothing else in there. There's nobody <laughs> else. It. Like we were just saying, there's nobody else who um, there's no. I don't have any other account. I don't have any secret accounts. For my fans, um, it's just they're both verified. Please, for God's sakes, don't send money to somebody else. It's kind of crazy. I mean, you can't, but you know, not you can't. Go but then don't not gonna don't go fucking us. blame me, man. My grandmother is not dying in the hospital. Um, I got that from somebody. They actually, and then they sent me. This person had forged a driver's license on me. Had taken a photo of me and like made a fake Texas ID. I don't live in Texas. I've never lived in Texas, and sent it to me. And that that was how that person proved they were me. And that, like my grandmother was dying in the hospital and I, they needed uh, hospital bills. My grandmothers are both dead. So are my grandparents. So don't. That's send... crazy that they did that. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's nuts. So don't send that person money. Send me money. You know what? Actually, don't send me money. Join my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Where you can watch the Q&A we're about to do. And see Jesse's boobs. I mean, what more could you ask for? <laughs> Yay! All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.